The story I want to paint for you is about technology. Where technology has come from and where it's going. This is a busy slide, but it tells you about the start of the computer revolution. Uh, started by someone called Charles Babbage uh, in the 1820s and 30s. And then over lots of changes has reached where we are today in terms of the usage of iPhones, laptops, computers, the World Wide Web, the Internet. But there were many steps along the way and many luminaries who made things possible from people at Microsoft, IBM, Google, and now Amazon at Jeff Bezos. This is a simple illustration of how things have changed over the last 47 years. Some of you might remember the Apollo mission, the manned mission to the moon. The iPhone 6 today is about 120 million times as powerful as the Apollo spaceship was. So what you carry in your hands, or at least several of you carry in your hands, is so much more powerful than what was sent to the moon just under 50 years ago. And you can't imagine the power that that creates and the, and the way that changes lives for all of us. A few years ago, at the turn of the century, there was a problem called the year 2000 problem in the computer business. All of the dates were recorded in two digits. For 1978, it was 78. And when the year was changing from 99 to 2000, that meant a lot of the calculations that people were doing were going to be reversed because you were subtracting 00, 0 from 78, 69, and so on. That created a huge opportunity for the computer world. And in fact, India started to boom using that opportunity to build solutions for what was called the Y2K bug. And that was the start of the Indian software revolution. Today, the Indian software business employs 4 million people and is a huge part of our economy and a large part of our exports. So this revolution over the last 15 years has really changed the world as we live it in India and the lives of so many people that are in this business. But that's enough about the past. I want to talk about seven, at least for me, exciting technologies of the future that I think are likely to impact you in a big way. And for those of you who are hugely technology interested, and for everyone else who uses Snapchat, these are things of interest. The first, Internet of Things. The Internet of Things takes the idea of putting a chip on every physical object. So imagine a scenario where your refrigerator knows that the milk is running low in the milk carton in the refrigerator. And on its own, it orders something at the local shopping or scootsy and has the milk delivered. This is a simple example of what the Internet of Things can do. There are more complicated examples. For example, airplane engines can decide when to self-repair themselves because of the maintenance cycle going low. And like that, many things that can be impacted by the use of Internet of Things. The next is big data. Big data is something I'm sure a lot of you read about and hear about. What is big data? In the world of 2020, the estimate is there'll be 50 billion GB of data in the world. Where is it coming from? There's about 25 billion devices, like the refrigerator, but like your iPhone, like the airplane engine, like every item that you can think of around us in the world. Then there's 25 million apps, approximately. So every app that is being used today creates some data. And there's 4 billion users of the approximately 8 billion people on Earth that will be using the Internet in some way. So every image you take on your Facebook, every Snapchat, every like, every emoji is part of this 50 billion GB of data. And what do we do with it? The things that we do with it are in the realm of data science. How do you take all of this data and make some 
interesting insight from it. So for example, there's a new app out, not so new, most of you might have seen, called Netflix. Netflix today has the ability to decide for you what's the next movie they think you're going to watch. Based on all of the previous movies you've seen, so every time you've seen the slapstick comedy movie that you've loved, it's going to start to recommend the next one. And every time you've seen a romantic comedy, it's going to recommend something like that. And like that, if you go on Amazon or Flipkart, you start to see that they know what book you think you might want to read or what item you think you might want to buy. And that's the power of the data science behind the big data, is doing the analysis and finding insights and then pre preemptively telling you about something which helps you make decisions rightly or wrongly. Another big movement today in the business technology world is artificial intelligence. So IBM has created something called Watson. Watson takes natural language and does analysis. So it's not based on a computer language and has now started to become so expert it can start to analyze medical situations and make recommendations like doctors can. It's not being used in that sense, but it has that ability and it's now up to us to monitor how some of these things can be used. And so artificial intelligence becomes a big way of change in the future. The next one is another one of those buzzwords floating around in the, in the media and in all of our lives. What is the cloud? The cloud is a large set of computers sitting on what's called a server farm in very large tracts of land. I've given examples here. One of them is the Amazon cloud. One of them is your Apple iCloud. It's sitting in some farmland, I was told, in Virginia. About 20 or 30 cricket fields of size of just computers. And this is where everything you every photo you've taken, every song you like, is stored. And that's the cloud, really. So the cloud is a big set of computers stored in, in these places. And equally in India, we have these now, with a lot of the local providers that provide the cloud service. But what does the cloud do? The cloud allows you to store data, to store applications, but you can also rent computer usage. So you don't have to buy computers anymore. And there's a subsidiary of Amazon called AWS, where you can just rent the usage of computer. But the most important, I think, is something called Cloud Foundry, where you can build applications for the cloud. And many of you who have an interest in technology would be interested in data science that I talked about before and building applications on the cloud, which has a new way of changing the world. All of this creates a large number of security threats. Uh, you might have heard of a store called Target in the US. They had 120 million of their credit card data stolen. So imagine the users of that credit card data all being abused with a stolen identity. And there, was, there is, of course, WikiLeaks, which uses the breach of security supposedly for some good. We're exposing what is supposedly secret and somewhat not good information about governments. But security is a big element that we need to keep in mind. And that's something protecting against security, cybersecurity, is becoming a huge area in the technology space. And then a couple of interesting products. So there was more services. In terms of products, there's a talk of driverless cars, where it can detect obstacles. It doesn't need a driver. It can sense lanes but apparently they've not yet driven in Mumbai. So we have to wait and see how they're going to feature there. I think they might have a carless car to drive in Mumbai instead of a driverless car. And then there's something called a HoloLens, where you can see virtual reality. In the virtual reality, you can do things like 3D object visualization and gaming, but also design of complicated engineering solutions in 3D in your by looking through the glass. So those were some of the um, exciting or, or seven areas of, I would call, technology change that I'm starting to see or we see in the business today. Huge areas of disruption with 
the disruption really comes not just from technology, but also how you use technology. So you take an example, most of you have heard of Airbnb or Uber. The technology itself is not that complicated. At the end, how to book a hotel room is not a complicated way of building a software. But the concept of using what are vacant rooms worldwide into a, a semi-hoteling system is what's important. So the leverage of technology into what's called a business model is what creates real value in the world of business. Of course, there are others like Amazon, which are genuine technology moves where they change the technology. You heard about Hopscotch earlier. Uh, the the, the uh, founder of Safranath will be talking. And these are changes that are made even from India in the way technology is leveraged. So with that, uh, l let me share about my views on looking ahead. The, the world of technology is changing fast. And there we see a lot of opportunity for everything that's happening in the world around us. If you have ways to connect with people, if you have ways to do some predictive analysis, if you have ways to improve lives, all of this technology can make a huge impact and be a huge benefit. What's also interesting is there's a shortage of this talent worldwide, whether you look in any of the Western worlds. And there's a huge abundance of this talent in India. And whether you believe it or not, our education system is one of the best in the world. And, and here, of course, at Cathedral, one of the best schools in India, if not the best. So you are at the real center point of building the technology future of the world. And from among, many of you, from among you, there'll be many of the future technology leaders that we've seen, like we've seen in the past, starting with the education you get here. That's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you, everyone.